Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We have been solving problems from here, math problems from this book. We are almost done solving all the problems from this book. If there is any math problem that gives you trouble, and if you wish to watch, watch the solution to it, you will find the solutions to almost all the problems from day number 251 through 400, from 251 through 400. This book, the second edition, happens to contain, in most cases, exactly the same problems and appearing on exactly the same page numbers as the problems that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. We are finished doing all the problems from this book. In the event that you are interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find all the original solutions from day number 1 through 250, from 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions, as you know, are a very important part of the exam. They are a big chunk of, big chunk of the exam. Unfortunately, the newer books do not provide us with sufficient practice problems. For that reason, from day number 401, we began solving quantitative comparison question from this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Right now, we are on page number 342. Please turn to it. Page number 342, problem number 14, the penultimate problem on the page, the second to the last problem on the page. The problem is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. Here's what we've been told, problem number 14, when it appeared in the exam, 49% of people got it right, 51% missed it. Here's what the problem says, I'm going to read it to you, in the event that you have trouble reading my handwriting, here we go. It says, among the 900 spectators, among the 900 spectators at a football game, there was a total of X students, there was a total of X students from college C, and a total of Y students, total of Y students, this is Y, from uh, and total of Y students, we are told, who were not from college C. X students were from college C and Y students who were not from college C. What we are being asked to compare is the number of spectators at the game who were not students. Number of people who at the game, number of people who were present at the game who were not students versus this quantity here, 900 minus X minus Y. 900 minus X minus Y. I'll give you five seconds now to pause and then pause the video. I want you to solve the problem yourself and then compare your work against the work that we'll do together in a few seconds time. So here we go. There are a couple of ways we can go about this problem. One way is to simply do it algebraically, which is not that complicated here. It's a very straightforward problem. But another way, if it makes you feel safer, if you want to make it a little bit more concrete so that you can relate to it, it's easier to deal with the numbers, it's easier to, to relate uh, to numbers because these are concrete numbers so we're dealing with x and y. So let's make up numbers, okay? How many, how many students would you like, how many students would you like at the game to be from college C? Right? There are 900 spectators we are told at the football game and there was a total of x students from college C. Let's pretend that there were 100 students from the college C from college C. And let's also pretend that a total of a total of Y students, let's put them in a different color, and a total of Y students, total of Y students who were not from college C. Let's pretend there were 200 students from other colleges. Well, if there were 100 students from college C and 200 more students who were not from the college C, that they're telling us that altogether there were 300 college students at the game. 300 college students that were at the game, they're telling us, of which we are told 100 of them were their own students, college C, and 200 students came from other colleges to watch the game. And the question here is, the number of spectators, number of spectators at the game who are not students. Well, there were 900 people to begin with. There are 900 people to begin with. And we are told that there were 100 students from college C, and 200 students from other colleges. 200 students from the other colleges. 
In other words, there were 300 students, there were 300 people among the spectators, among, among the 900 spectators, there were 300 people who were students. Well, the rest must not be students, sir, obviously. There's, there's only two possibilities. You either are you either are a student or you're not. It doesn't matter whether you're a student of college C or some other college. There were a total of 300 people there who are students. Answer is 600 here. That's exactly what we have here. 900. 900 total people. 900 total people minus the number of students. The number of students was x plus y. Why x plus y? Because x x is the number of students from college C and y is the number of students from other colleges. So this is the total number of students. 900 minus the total number of students actually represents the number of people at the game who are not students. These two quantities are exactly equal. The answer is C. The answer is C. Inadvertently, inadvertently I ended up mixing I ended up mixing the algebraic method and the plugging in method together here. What we should have done actually at the end is once we have the answer of 600 here, once we had the answer of 600 here, we would have gone to this quantity, 900 minus x minus y, and we would have substituted, we would have substituted minus 100 minus 200, and we would have seen that on this column we also get 600, 600 what we had in this column, and therefore the answer is C. Instead, inadvertently I started doing the algebraic method, but that's what it is. 900 minus the number of students, number of students is x plus y, and therefore 900 minus x minus y is the number of people in the game, who are not student, which is exactly what the first column says. Therefore, the two quantities are equal. Let's do the last problem in the, in, in the section there, number 15. Number 15. Number 15 is the geometry problem. Let's see what 15 has to say. Again, as soon as I finish setting it up, you must pause the video. Number 15. Only, only 30% of the people had luck with it, 70% of the people who took the exam, 7 tenths of the people missed it. We are told, O, we are told, is the, is the center of the circle, of the circle. Here's your circle right here. O is the center, and we are told, and, and, angle, R O S is a right angle. This is exactly how it appears in the exam. Nothing to it, nothing more, nothing less. Here's here's what the picture looks like. Here's the center O. The line goes through it. We are told this is P O Q. And here is your triangle. R O S. R O S. Again, one more time. This is exactly how it appears in the exam. We are told that the angle R O S that we see there, R O S, that 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 triangle, triangle R O S. We are told is a right angle. Is a is a right angle. Or rather, we are told that angle R O S. We are told that angle R O S is a right angle. This is what the picture looks like. O, we are told, is the center of the circle. I'm going to be quiet now. I'll give you five seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do the problem yourself, as always. Oh, bl bloody hell, I have not told you yet what to compare. This is no good. That was not very bright, was it? Here are the two quantities. Column A. Column B. Column A, we have a ratio of PQ over RS versus 2. PQ over RS versus... Oh, they are being actually very nice. They say 2 over 1 for some reason. They don't say 2, they say 2 over 1. I'll be quiet now, okay? Give me 5 seconds to pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself. Alright, here we go. The first thing we're going to do, and I should not have set it up like this because I left no room at all for, for, for me to work in. Uh, we can do it here. We can erase this thing. Just remember PQ over RS versus, versus 2 over 1. 
We are told that O is the center, we are told that R, O, S is the right angle. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to redraw this picture so that it's easier to look at. R, O, S, we are told, is the right angle. Right here is the right angle, it's a, it's a 90 degrees. The bloody thing, the bloody thing looks nothing like 90 degrees. It looks nothing like 90 degrees because the pictures, as you know, pictures in the exam, pictures on the, on the GRE, are not drawn to scale. So we're going to we're going to redraw our picture so something something that actually looks like our 90 degrees something that is easier to look at. So let, there we go. Let's do it here right here. Let's do it right here. Here's our circle, here's our center. There we go. Voila. 90 degrees makes it easy. This is our center O. This is P to Q. And Q now is going to be same as S. Point Q is now the same as point S. They overlap each other. This is point S, which means this must be point R. Are you with me? That's a good thing that we put them right next to each other. So, uh, I, 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 it wasn't by design, but it, it turned, it's just as well that it turned out this way. Because now we have the nice checked position. And we can uh, take a look at how it was presented to us and how we transformed it. So that's what it is. What else do we know? Did I leave out something? I, 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 I hope and pray to God that I did not leave out anything. Uh, no, that's it. That's, that's good. That's good. Because if I had left out something, then I would have, to, I would have, I would have had to do, redo the entire video. Uh, and I didn't, want to, I didn't want to go there. So that, let's, let's finish, okay? Let, let, let's finish it up. I'm talking too much here. This, as you know, this is the center. We are told that this is the center. So from here to here, from O to Q or O to S, doesn't matter what you call it, is the radius. Similarly, O to R is also a radius. And since this is radius and this is radius, obviously these two sides are equal. And since this is 90 degrees, and since these two sides are equal because they are radii, which means that this angle has to be 45, and this angle has to be 45. Are you with me so far? Now we know in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, this is 90 degrees, this is 45 degrees, and this is 45 degrees. We know that if this side is 1 and if this side is 1, then this missing side, let's call it x, this missing side, x squared would have to be 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is 2, which tells us that x has to be square root of 2. And that's nothing new. We already know that in a, in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the ratio of the side is 1, 1, root 2. Let's, let's put that here, 1, 1, root 2. 1, 1, root 2, which means, which means instead of 1, had this side been r inches and this side has been r inches, 1 times r, 1 times r, this would have been root 2 times r, which makes perfect sense. r is the radius, I should not put in capital R for, for two reasons, I should not have put a capital R for two reasons, because that capital R is going to confuse with this point r, and not only, not only that, but the fact that I already used small r to re represent the radius. So this is our this is our radius. So one times r, one times r is going to be root two times r. So this this side is going to be root two times r. We are almost done. We are almost done. I'm going to pick up speed now. In the first column, we have pq. We have pq. How much is p to q? P to q. How much you suppose p to q is? P to q, p to q is two times the r, two times the radius, two times the radius. And how much do you suppose r to s is? We just found r to s is the hypotenuse, which is root 2 times r. Root 2 times r. Are you with me so far? r's cancel out because divide top and bottom by r. So in the first column, we end up with 2 over root 2, 2 over root 2, versus 2 over 1. Versus 2 over 1. Let's continue somewhere here. Where can we continue here? Let's continue here. We're going to continue this part over here. 2 over root 2 versus 2 over 1. Let's divide, let's divide both columns by 2. If you divide this column by 2, this 2 is going to drop out, it becomes 1. If you divide this column by 2, this is going to drop out. And what we end up is 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2 versus 1. Are you still with me? Multiply both columns by root 2, multiply this column by root 2, multiply this column by root 2. And if you do that, root 2 drops out. And we, in the first column we end up with 1, in the second column we end up with root 2. 1 versus root 2, and of course we know that root 2 is more than 1. Root 2 is more than 1. The answer is 
A. Or rather, the answer is B. The answer is B. That's all. I hope you are able to read uh, that law, but that's what it is. The answer is B because at the end we are comparing 1 versus root 2 and of course root 2 is bigger. How much bigger? We don't really worry about it. We don't need to worry about it. Root of 2 obviously is going to be more than 1. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.